So it all begins when Wheeljack gets his clumsy ass stuck under a big pile of wedge during a firefight. Following his rescue by Megatron, he becomes a Decepticon and paints himself a dark colour. So yeah, Wheeljack is angrier than the Colonel at a poultry rights protest. Unfortunately, he directs all this anger at his former mentor, Hotshot, the only Autobot who actually tried to save him. When the pair are eventually reunited, Wheeljack excels himself to Cowboy Twat Factor 9 by simply shooting Hotshot after he apologises. After the pair have several ups and downs, Hotshot finally wins personal redemption and a moral victory when he rescues Sideswipe from a fire set by Wheeljack. So really, the only things missing from that are Mr. Belding and a GO Bayside! So despite my play down of all of that fromage, I did quite enjoy the story arc. I mean, after all, in Armada, a Decepticon with a bit of character depth was quite novel. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a sucker for cartoon accuracy, and unfortunately Wheeljack is a Twix with no caramel. These yellow stripes are straight off a of Fiat Punto, and what should be black is actually a grey, dull, browny... Bleh. Micron Legend Rampage. Proof that when Hasbro pee on the floor, Takara pull the flush and put the seat down. I mean, not only is this guy sporting some serious cartoon accuracy, but all the extra detail that Takara put in make Hasbro's paint designers look like a lazy bunch of popcorn eaters. So while the paint job floats nicely, the figure really is a mixed bag. Articulation wise, his arms do enough, but unless they're clipped in properly, his knees hang about as loose as rental boxer shorts. His legs can 180, but that exposes these chasms, for which you might need a tour guide. His head does rotate, just not on its own. And I really can't decide on his Gullwing Door backpack. Is it a bit too top shelf and tight trousers? That aside though, he always looks pretty mean on the shelf, like he's practicing for some sort of endurance chest flex competition. His weapons make him look like he's geared up by going to the nearest sports department store with his pocket money. They're supposed to be those semi-acceptable laser rods he had on the show, but to me it just looks like someone stole his drum kit. That amongst other things. They do, however, store pretty nicely. And just when you thought you were going to get two articulated wrists, you get one. Mystery. So the alt mode is where Takara's colours really excel. Hasbro? No way! More like Hobo. So this is cool, he's a black sports car. Ain't much wrong with a black sports car. But just when you thought Gary Busey was coming to town, Nick Nolte shows up. You got your cheese bumper and your view down Crotch Valley, but I'd rather have jammy Dodgers for wheels than these Minicon ports. Not only do they wreck the look of the back end, but isn't this just what every sports car has been missing? I wish I could make all my other toys look this cool. So this is Windshear, Wheeljack's Minicon. He's got a nice alt mode. And for a Minicon, a pretty cool robot mode. I don't want to make fun of him. He's got a really red face. Damn. Damn. Gimmick time arrives when you chuck Windshear on top and push down. Giving you a nice view of his guts and two missile launchers. I can't really argue with Gullwing Door missile launchers. They're fairly awesome. It would have been nice to pretend that it was a Thunderhawk style flight mode though. It's not. Apart from these two guys, there's one other reaping, and that's 2008 Botcon exclusive Shattered Glass Sideswipe. Kinda of fitting, because apparently Takara based Wheeljack's head mold off Sideswipe anyways. So I'm out of Wheeljack. While he's got a good alt mode, a good gimmick, a good minicon, and a good transformation, it's his robot mode where he falls short. Though it is good looking, it doesn't make a very good toy. It is primarily down to the lack of articulation, and this pretty much sums him up. What? What?